Our Zoning and Development Committee is meeting tonight to discuss the City Club Apartments proposal at 3636 North Lakeshore Drive. Out of respect to all of you who are volunteering your time to be a zoning representative, I will be moving this meeting along to try to keep it to two hours. However, before we start, uh, Mark Lieberson from North Halstead Business Alliance contacted my office with a request to make an announcement about last week's zoning meeting. Mark, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, James. I appreciate it. Uh, basically, um, we were uh, surprised by our representative at last week's meeting. Um, ended up that, uh, and we, we addressed a letter to the alderman about this, and, and I wanted to bring it to everyone's attention here, uh, that unfortunately our representative last week, normally it would be myself, I'm vice president of the organization, or Ramesh uh, Erna, and I Aikam, who would be representing uh, North Halstead, uh, but we were unavailable and another member of the board ended up uh, attending, but he did not uh, and ended up acting in a manner that we didn't anticipate and uh, didn't advocate the position that we were uh, taking as a board, which was more in alignment with Uptown United. Um, so because of the difference between his actions and our intentions, we held an emergency board meeting the next day to discuss what to do and, and therefore addressed a letter to the alderman, which I wanted to bring to everyone's attention who's sitting here, uh, that, um, that the board voted to um, issue this letter, basically saying that uh, requesting that our vote uh, be changed, that the chamber was voting yes in support of the development. Um, and we regret terribly that, uh, that this occurred. I understand that um, he ended up engaging in a manner uh, that was representing uh, opinions that he had that didn't represent the, the posture of our organization. Um, and, and that was not the intention. So we wanted to bring this to your attention and apologize for the confusion. Uh, as, I, as I said, normally, uh, you've seen me attend these meetings before and you've seen Ramesh attend these meetings before and uh, you'll never see uh, anyone but us attend the meetings in the future based upon the experience that occurred last week. Right. So I'm not sure what to do about that, um, but I did want to at least bring it to your attention uh, as the organization reviewed what was uh, occurring at 4600 Marine Drive. The organization's uh, position was uh, in support of uh, the um, project. Okay, well, thanks, Mark. Um, th this is, to be honest, has never happened before. Um, this does change the vote to 16 in favor of this development and 15 opposed. Um, uh, it's all very, very, very close. Uh, so I'm going to have to think more um, about my decision and when I've made that decision after talking to some other people, I will uh, let the Zoning Development Committee know and um, uh, certainly uh, the 46th Ward in a newsletter. So thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, certainly it wasn't our intention to be in a position to put you in uh, with such a close vote to be in any way actively engaged in a conversation that puts us in a different position than Uptown United. So. Uh, my apologies on behalf of the organization. Thank you, thank you. Well, before City Club Apartments presents to the committee and to our residents, I will now pass it over to Tressa Fear, my chief of staff for the roll call. Thank you. <clears throat> when I call your organization and, um, and or your name, please just let me know that you're here. Um, 3600 North Lakeshore Drive, Douglas Smith. I'm here. Thank you. Thirty-six sixty North Lakeshore Drive. Thirty six sixty North Lakeshore Drive. Okay. 
3750 North Lakeshore Drive. Okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm here. 37 okay. is here. I'm yeah, sorry. I thought so. <laughs> like I saw him there. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Thank you. All right. <laughs> All right. Tressa 3660. Thank you. Sorry. That's okay. Everyone's getting warmed up here. Uh, 3930 North Pine Grove. Present. Thank you. Uh, let's see. 555 Cornelia. Hello, I'm here, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. Mm -hmm. Let's see. 828 Grace, Patrick Nagel. I'm here. Good evening, Tressa. Thank you. Uh, Beacon Block Club. I am here, Stuart Berman. Thank you. Thank you. Buena Park Neighbors, Alex Walking. Here. Thank you. Clarendon Park Neighbors, Jackson Morrissey. I'm here. Thank you. And uh, Marty Tangora. I'm here. Thank you. Uh, Lakeside Area Neighbors Association, Marianne. Here. Thank you. Let's see. Magnolia Malden, Kathy Cook. Okay. Mark Zipper. Here. Thank you. Chester Krabalowski. Here. Thank you. Let's see. Patrick Waters, UCC. Present. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Truman Square Neighbors. Dan. Stand on. Friendly Towers. Here I am. Thank you. Okay. North Halstead Business Alliance. Mark just spoke. Uh, 4250 Marine, Robert. Here. Thank you. Let's see, 4300 North Marine, Michael Waltz. Here. Thank you. Six fifty five West Irving Park, Susie Hunter. Thank you. Uh, Ainsley Winmore Black Club, Brian Beezer. Brian, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep, I can now. Thanks. Okay. okay. Dover Street neighbors, Scott Adams. Sure. Thank you, Scott. East Lakeview neighbors, Michael Zink. Hi, Tress, I'm here. Hi. Thank you. Uh, Nuna, Maria. Is Maria here, on? Here. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Um, one Northside, Chris White. Here, I have some questions about how this vote works, though. Okay, we're gonna, can we finish the roll first, please? Thank you. Luke Sauer. Here. Thank you. Jackie Lowy, Uptown United. I am here. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Curtis Cody, 20, 1026 West Montrose. I'm here. Thank you, Curtis. Nonprofits Entertainment, Jackie Taylor. I am here. Hi, Jackie. Thank Hi. you. And 3950 North Lakeshore Drive. Is Anna on? Yep, right here. Hi, Anna. Thank you. And uh, Voice of the People, Michael Rohrbeck. Is Michael on? Okay. 
we are finished with the roll. Thank you, Tressa. Uh, before I, I go on, I, you know, what I just announced probably surprised a lot of people. Um, I would suggest that any questions that you have, uh, you send them to my email, james.kappelman at cityofchicago.org. And I'll provide some type of a way of communicating to all of you to answer a lot of your questions, but I wanna do it all at one time. But, but I wanna make it very clear. Um, uh, I still have to make a decision. Uh, I typically make decisions based on, on uh, the what the majority vote says. This, this is extraordinarily different. Uh, so I, I want to take in more information before I make a final decision, but, but please send me your questions so that uh, I can make sure that uh, I answer them. So with that, I will give the floor to City Club Apartments to present their proposal. Good evening, everyone. My name is John George and I'm an attorney and I represent the developer of the property at 3636 North Lakeshore Drive. The other members of our team that are with me tonight are Paul Fromm on behalf of the developer, Chris Sash, who is the architect on the project, uh, Javier Milan, who is the traffic engineer from the firm of KLOA, and also my partner, Chris Leach, who's worked with me on the project. First of all, I would like to say thanks to you, Alderman Kaplman, and also to your committee for giving us the opportunity to present our project tonight. We, we really appreciate it. I would like to first go over some of the facts uh, and then I will ask the architect to go through the PowerPoint presentation and explain in detail the design of the buildings. Uh, the subject site is approximately 83,417 square feet. The address is 3636 North Lakeshore Drive. The site is presently vacant. To the west of the site is the 3660 North Lakeshore Drive building also known as the New York Apartment Building. And that has a height of 460 feet and contains 594 apartments. The building to the south of our site is the 3600 North Lakeshore Drive Building, which is 266 feet tall and has 640 units. The building to the north of our site is the 3700 North Lakeshore Drive Project. The zoning for the site is presently PD 1023, the underlying zoning is RM6. The existing plan development that's on the site right now permits a residential building that would be 330 feet tall and have 220 dwelling units. The development that uh, we, we were discussing tonight involves a presentation of two residential buildings to be built on the site. One building would be 19 stories tall with a height of 228 feet, four inches to the top of the mechanical. The other building would be a six story building that would be 75 feet, six inches tall to the top of the mechanical. The total number of units that would be involved here in both buildings would be 333 units and there would be 145 parking spaces below grade and another 25 tandem, spark, tandem parking spaces, which would also be below grade for a total of 170 parking spaces. At the request of the city, we changed the underlying zoning to B2-3 so that the parking would be in compliance with the zoning code. I filed the application to amend plan development 1023 in April of 2020. And since that time, uh, I have had numerous meetings with various organizations. We had meetings prior to the time I filed as well. And some of the meetings that we had, I would like to just go through those. We've had meetings with the 3600 North Lakeshore Drive building, the 3660 North Lakeshore Drive building, the 3700 North Lakeshore Drive building, and the East Lakeview neighbors. We have signed agreements from both the 3600 North Lakeshore Drive building and the 3660 North Lakeshore Drive building in support of our project. We worked with lawyers for them, Bridget O'Keefe uh, for 3660 and Andrew Scott for the 3600 building. We also have a letter. We had two meetings before the East Lakeview neighbors, and we have a letter of support from that organization for our project. We've had numerous meetings with uh, the Department of Planning and Development uh, who support our project, both on the massing and design of our project. 
We've also had meetings with the Chicago Department of Transportation of the City of Chicago, the Fire Department, the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities, and all of these organizations which I just listed have given approval for our project. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask Chris Sash, to, the architect on the project, to go through and describe in detail the design and massing of the project. And then after we've finished, uh, all of our members of our team will stand, be, stand ready to answer any of the questions that you have concerning our project. And again, I just want to say thanks again for giving us the opportunity to be here tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, Chris, can you take over and uh, um, operate your, plan, your PowerPoint? Yes. Hey, Chris, before you begin, I just want to make one clarification. The city asked us to change the underlying zoning to the B2-5 as opposed to the B2-3. B2 just want to make that quick clarification. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Go ahead, Chris. Okay. Now let me just share my screen here. Okay, is that visible? Yes, we can see it. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you, Alderman Kappelman, uh, panelists, and everyone uh, to give us this opportunity to present this project to you. It's something that uh, we're really excited about. Um, I will explain this image on the screen a little bit later. Uh, we'll look at this in more detail. So just a, a little bit about the team um, on this project. Uh, so, as, as Jack said, my name is Chris Sash. Um, I'm a senior project manager and the director of architecture for BKB Group. Uh, it's a company that's been around for more than 40 years, um, have four offices throughout the United States, uh, including Chicago, and uh, we've done a number of projects uh, throughout the, the United States. Uh, teaming up with us, uh, we have um, engineers, uh, local engineers and um, anchors that are that are all local in Chicago. So this slide here uh, shows site, which is kind of bounded by this this heavier dark line. This blue area here is the current access that uh, goes through to 3660 North Lakeshore Drive, the New York private residences. Uh, this also explains and gives context to some of the uh, surrounding buildings with their heights in story. And then as you can see, the site is on the, located on the corner of Waveland Avenue and in a Lakeshore Drive. Right here we have the site plan. So I'm just gonna run through each of these points here and just explain a little bit further. So along Waveland Avenue, uh, we have uh, six loading spaces um, that would be used for the, uh, the project, uh, the site uh, between the hours of 8 and 9 p.m. Uh, after those times, it would be uh, street parking. This area right here is the, the cul-de-sac. Um, it's in the same location as previously uh, was for the, the cul-de-sac that entered into the, the New York private residences. There'll be seven uh, drop-off spaces around the cul-de-sac. And this has been uh, sized appropriately uh, for uh, fire truck and emergency vehicle access. Down here, you can see kind of a dashed line. This represents the, the garage entries or entrances below this level, as there is a, a basement level parking garage. Number four down here, so this is a, a snow bank area. So any of the snow uh, on the site and these ramps would be collected in here. And as it melts, uh, this is sloped to drain back onto the property um, and then it will be taken away through um, drainage designed by our civil engineer. Number five is a pedestrian walk 
uh, along the south side of the, the property. The six here, this is a uh, two-way access. So we basically have access from inner Lakeshore Drive down to the, the parking garage entries down here. And then also from Waveland Avenue through the cul-de-sac and down into the garage entries down there, both two-way. Number seven here. Uh, is in the courtyard area, so set back off Lakeshore Drive, uh, and there'll be a re reflecting pond and some landscaping there. Um, one thing to note is uh, City Club Apartments, the owner of these buildings, uh, take pride in the, the landscaping, and the level of detail and um, quality of, of the landscaping, that, as you'll see in some of the, the slides following. Number eight up here are two valet loading spaces for the restaurant. And then the restaurant is actually right here. I'll jump ahead to, to item 10. So the restaurant is there. The entry for the restaurant is right here. The main entry for the, the building is right here. So there's the drop off spaces there. There's also uh, elevator access from the parking below, which I'll, I'll show in a second here. And then there's existing, sorry, my screen is covered by the little video here. Uh, existing street parking along Inner Lakeshore Drive um, will remain, that will not be affected. Uh, the sidewalks along Waveland Avenue and Inner Lakeshore Drive will be continuous, they will not be affected. Uh, the CTA bus stop here um, may be temporarily relocated to the north during construction, but then we'll come back to its existing location. And then along both Inner Lakeshore Drive and Waveland Avenue, there'll be uh, trees planted to um, comply with uh, the Chicago Landscape Ordinance, which also applies to um, trees within the property uh, along the driveways. As Jack was saying earlier, just to give you some context here where the, the buildings are though. So this is the taller building, uh, that's 19 stories. It contains 186 units. This is the mechanical area, so the, 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 tall, the tallest point of the building is right here. Uh, the buildings are connected by a one-story connector here, and then the six-story building is down here, and the, the elevation, which we'll see uh, shortly here, shows the mechanical screen right in this location. Moving on to the, the parking garage. So just to orient you here, so this is the driveway from Inner Lakeshore Drive. This is the driveway from Waveland Avenue. We have the garage entry points, the entries right in this corner. Uh, loading back here, so the loading is um, off, is away from the street and is not at the first floor level, it's in the basement level, so it's, it's not visible. We've put as much of the mechanical um, support for the building in at this lower level, and also the uh, stormwater retention uh, is located in the, the basement level as well. There'll be a number of car sharing vehicles in, uh, located in uh, the basement uh, parking area and then electric vehicle ch charging stations. And as Jack mentioned before, uh, we have a total of 170 spaces. So this is an elevation looking along Lakeshore Drive, just to give some context of the heights of the adjacent buildings. So this is the, the development here. Here is the 19 story building which is 228 foot four inches to the top of the mechanical screen. 
And here's the shorter six story building, which is 75 foot six to the top of the mechanical screen. We have 3660 behind here, the New York private residences, 3600 to the south, and then 3700 to the north. So as you can see, moving south towards downtown, the, the, the buildings start to get taller and uh, we're currently shorter than the majority of those buildings. Just zooming in here, a little bit closer context. So we have Waveland Avenue here. We have 3600 North Lakeshore Drive here. The New York Private Residences Tower behind and then 3700 North Lakeshore Drive across here. So you can see here the elevation of the 19 story building and the six story building with the, the heights um, along with the way that this building was designed is you can see that the band of this lower portion of the building here, we kept that area, the pedestrian level uh, experience to be at a smaller scale, kind of in line with what's across the street at 3700. And as we uh, look at the, some of the perspectives, you'll see that that uh, has a vernacular of more like a Chicago townhome look. One thing that we, we don't show on these uh, elevations just for clarity is, as I had mentioned on the site plan, there are trees that will be planted along Lakeshore Drive. So uh, you would normally see those, but we wanted to show you the architecture here. So this is just zooming in a little bit closer to show some of the, the dimensions and separations from the adjacent buildings. This is an elevation from uh, Waveland Avenue looking south. So this is the New York private residences. Here is our 19 story building. And then, as I was just mentioning before, at the base of this building, the first two stories we dealt with um, and tried to use the typology of uh, the Chicago um, townhome, just to give a little bit more of a, a, a smaller scale feel to the pedestrians uh, walking along the street. And just to highlight here on the corner is the, the restaurant area, uh, restaurant entry, sorry. And then the entry uh, to the cul-de-sac area is, is right in this area. So we did some uh, shadow studies. Um, the, the top three images of each of these upcoming slides are the existing conditions. The bottom three images shows in green the shadows that would be cast by the new buildings. So this is taken on March 20th. You can see the green here, uh, the effect of, of our building. Then looking at June 21st, not too many days away. Um, you can see the shadows are much shorter. Obviously, we're in summer in this at this time. Then moving into the fall. Then the Just coming back to this, this first slide, um, I just wanted to explain some of the materials that we have on the building um, and go into that a little bit more detail. So here you can see that the trees are back in this, uh, just to, to show the, the, um, the context and the, the siding of the building. We have the restaurant in the corner here and the entry to the restaurant would be right here. You can see the, the town home looking um, buildings right here, 
form the base of the high rise. So these, this facade here is predominantly um, brick. On the corner here, we have brick and metal panel. Um, moving into this courtyard area here, this would be where uh, all of the landscaping is and the, the um, reflecting pond. We have another view coming up to, to zoom into that a little bit more. So uh, you can see that in more detail. Then with the, the shorter building, uh, we have a green roof on top. You can see the mechanical screen there, which is the highest point of that that building and then the highest point of this building is right at that, the top of the peak there. Uh, the materials for the shorter building uh, kind of tie in with the, the building, uh, the materials on the base of the high rise. So we're using uh, brick and, and metal panel um, and a few different colors. Then as we go into the high rise here, this is predominantly glass and, and metal panel. So this is a view uh, as if you're on the sidewalk, walking down Lakeshore Drive, looking into the, the courtyard. So we have a number of steps of landscaping here to kind of soften the edge um, and which steps up to the, the courtyard area in here. Uh, the, the building is, is set back from the street and uh, we would, as I was saying before, we have metal panels, um, a few different colors of metal panel there, an ornate fence that separates uh, from the, the courtyard there. Um, and these, these uh, the landscaping um, will be maintained year round. That completes the presentation. Alderman Kappelman, you're on mute. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, City Club Apartments, for your presentation. I will now take questions from our committee members. A reminder that committee members should chat at all panelists who have a question. Kylie will then uh, call on each committee member when it's their turn. And out of respect for everyone's time, please keep your question concise to ensure that we fit in as many questions uh, from as many people as possible. Susie. Hi, thank you. Um, I have a question in regards to the rationale for the different materials you use between the two buildings where the townhouse lower six story looks very um, aesthetically pleasing to all the other buildings where the glass higher rise doesn't seem to fit in with the landscape of the neighborhood. So what was the rationale for A, the differences between the two buildings and B, using the glass for the high rise? Good question. Um, the, so the aesthetic of the high rise, the, uh, the, the, the slight blue tint that you saw on the high rise, it's kind of evoking of Lake Michigan. Um, there's, you know, we, we want to tie into the context of, of the surroundings. Um, the the high rise, well, as I was saying before, with the pedestrian experience, as you walk around, uh, if you're on the sidewalk looking up, you would generally see the um, the brick and the, the metal panel of those lower two stories. The uh, high rise is actually set back um, a number of feet from the edge of those. So that would, um, it, there does appear to be some separation in the, the volumes. Does anyone have a question who was unable to use the chat? Uh, okay, Alex? Hey there, thanks Kylie. Um, I have a quick question for so 
I'm looking at the plan, is, am I understanding correctly that the curb cut in the driveway will be moved from where it currently is? From, uh, from Lakeshore Drive? Right. Yes, yeah, that's, so the existing curb cut there, um, which was very close to, to Waveland, will be moved further south. So that would kind of help to alleviate some of the congestion at that corner. So my follow up to that, and I'll make this brief, is what's the what's the method or what's the process as far as construction goes? Is that going to be done first, so as not to create a traffic congestion on Wayland, or what's the what's the timeline and what's the method of operation here? Uh, in terms of the actual construction sequencing, um, I'm not a general contractor, sorry, but we, we would have to go through that um, with the, the contractor to, to figure that out. But essentially, um, there would be uh, meetings to, to kind of talk through that with the neighborhoods um, to, to make sure everyone understood and was on the same page about how that happens. Thank you. Follow up on that, the buildings are connected at the base by the garage, by the parking garage. So construction of both buildings will happen at the same time. There won't be a phasing. They'll be building the base and then they'll be going up with both buildings on, on each side of the base. I'm not sure if that was your question, but I just want to make that clear. Thank you. Robert. Uh, hi, I have a, a question for Chris. Chris, I haven't seen any plans, some elevations, detailed elevations, but I got to ask, what in the world are you thinking by putting black metal facing the lakefront on Lakeshore Drive? That looks really, it looks like a parking garage, like a siding to a parking garage or something. It doesn't fit into the neighborhood at all. And I would love to see some elevations of what you consider to be townhomes, because if those are like River North style townhomes versus what that entire neighborhood has a couple blocks away, I think there's gonna be a huge disconnect in the design between what you guys consider to be a, a really blue chip site versus what you're throwing up there. That thing looks like something from River North. So I just wanna know, is, there, is this a final, uh, final thing that you're doing or can that black metal be changed to something like, I don't know, maybe limestone, maybe, some, maybe an alternating brick pattern, something? That's my question. Yeah, this is something that we've obviously spent a lot of time looking at. Um, the, the, the renderings don't do it justice. Um, the, the, the metal panel uh, does not necessarily mean it's flat. There'll be some, um, uh, um, some articulation in that um, metal panel, some different profiles. Um, and this is something that we have spent time working through uh, DPD with um, and making sure that uh, we're on the same page in terms of the, the design aesthetic and the approach. And in terms of the, the, um, the townhome looking uh, piece of the, the base on, on Waveland Avenue, I mean, it, we're, we weren't trying to replicate anything that we were just saying that in terms of the scale of the, that base, um, we were using a townhome size um, to, to basically uh, allude to that. Uh, this is Alderman Kaplan, and I can also step in a little bit about the Department of Planning and Development. Um, a, a number of years ago, uh, they made the decision that um, they weren't satisfied with the way design of buildings uh, came about uh, from the input of the uh, uh, local alder people and the community. And so uh, they have a team of architects that um, uh, communicate with the developer and they do that in line with, with the community at the same time. But um, a lot of uh, the, what you're seeing right now is um, many, many, many different revisions that were required by the Department of Planning and Development. We do that on purpose because what we found in the past is that when we, uh, the community approves a design and then it goes before the Department of Planning and Development and they create all these changes, the community rightfully gets upset. So 
that's why it was so important to get uh, DPD's input uh, earlier on. So you'll have a much better idea of what the expectations are from the Department of Planning Development. Just following up on what the alderman just said, I mean, the city now has four different groups of, uh, and they're, they're, designed, they're allocated to different parts of the city, but we there's one that's assigned to this area here up on the north side. And we must have had eight meetings at least with them about the massing and the design of this building and uh, this these buildings plural. And so what you're seeing tonight is the result of all of the meetings that we've had with the architects for the city as well as our own architects. And so there's been a great deal of input into this design and massing that's before you tonight. Chris? Um, I wanted to know if, uh, if if you're asking for a zoning variance, you have, what is your affordability plan? And then I was also curious about what the existing condo owners have, has it been smooth? Is everybody getting what they need to move on? Or are there people who like are trying not to leave? The answer, uh, there are people, there are representatives from 3660 here to, on this call tonight and also 3600 who are immediate neighbors as well as 3700. But I know that we have worked out agreements extensively with 3660 and 3600. And I know that uh, I think the representatives are here and they can, they can speak to what the agreement was, but both of them have, have indicated and, and issued statements that they support this project. And so uh, uh, I don't know if, if the representatives from 3660 and, and 3600 would like to talk at this point in time. Um, if I can speak. Uh, is Bridget O'Keefe on the line at, around in the meeting tonight? Oh, Doug, Douglas, you cut out, but if you're trying to speak. Yes, I'm trying to speak. I, I'm Douglas Smith. I'm the vice president of the 3600 uh, Condo Asas Association Board. We've been working with the developers since late 2018. We've had uh, quite a few meetings and our lawyer has been involved. Uh, we had concerns about the building. Uh, the kinds of concerns we had were uh, whether there would be structural damage to our patio wall of course, we were interested in the, the look of the building and the height of the building. Uh, we've uh, reached an agreement with the developers that will uh, take care of us if there's any vibration damage or any damage to our towers during construction. Uh, we had some concerns about their snow removal plan and where they would put the uh, snow runoff. Uh, that's been satisfied. Uh, so yes, uh, uh, 3,600, uh, the board and the ownership here at uh, 3,600 are, are in support of this development. Um, my name is Bridget O'Keefe. I'm, I'm here on behalf of 3,660, um, the New York private residences. Um, we also have reached an agreement with the owners of, um, with CCA. Um, we spent three years uh, in conversation, working with them co collaboratively to try to find a solution that will work well for the overall site, particularly in regards to traffic, parking, and infrastructure. Um, we are now just fine tuning the PD um, and reviewing the final language, but uh, the plan that's being proposed to you tonight is in conformity with the framework plan that we have agreed to. And this is a development where the affordable requirements ordinance kicks in. Uh, the Department of Planning Development, um, they ensure that the ARO is followed uh, to the letter of the law. Jack, can you talk about uh, how, the, how you are following the ARO, please? Uh, Chris, do you have the, the sheet of the, the document on that at your hand? Yes, yes, I do. Uh, this development, uh, this development um, requires under the two, 2015 ARO um, ordinance requires 11 um, ARO units 
And we, in discussions with Alderman Kappelman, we have agreed to provide all 11 units on site as opposed to an off site or as opposed to the buyout uh, option. So all 11 units will be on site and they will be in the same unit mix percentage as the units that we market rate units that we have. I don't have the exact breakdown between studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms, but the department, the uh, Department of Housing requires that they are in the same unit mix percentage as the market rate and we will be complying with that as well. Luke Sauer. Hi, um, I'm on the 46 Ward Zoning Committee. I also live at 3900. I've uh, been looking at this um, piece of land for a long time. And, you know, my take is I think you guys have done a thoughtful, excellent uh, job. I think it fits very nicely into some of the older buildings and actually adds something to a challenging uh, um, puzzle that's that's been around here for quite some time. Um, my direct question is relating to the restaurant, which could potentially be a, a wonderful amenity for the area. I'm curious about the square footage of the restaurant, uh, what type of concept you envision putting in there, and also where you plan on um, having the valet uh, park cars and positioned in the event that it's a restaurant that uh, serves alcohol and has a nighttime business. Paul, can you uh, can you address those questions, Paul Fromm? Sure, I can, I can speak to that. Um, with City Coal Apartments. So the restaurant size will be approximately 5,000 to 6,000 square feet. Uh, we very much envision it being a neighborhood restaurant. Uh, it's not intended to be a, a bar. It's really a place where you'd go for you know an espresso in the morning, uh, a lunch before you go out to the lake and, and dinner with your family, uh, weddings, anniversaries. Um, so really neighborhood driven, kind of an all day type concept. Um, so that's kind of concept square footage. And the third question was valet. Uh, so the valet would be responsible for finding the parking um, if the restaurant should want it. So. Um, I think you missed the question. Um, the, the question regarding uh, valet was where um, on the uh, plan, on the exterior plan, to envision having the valet and the, and the backup traffic flow from the cars. Got it. So the the you know the site plan shows them um, right up on the corner of the sort of furthest east point on Waveland near the corner of Lakeshore Drive, which would be right at the entrance to the restaurant is where we're proposing those spaces. Mark Zipper. Oh, sorry. Okay, Mark Zipper. Um, interesting. On the top to uh, expand about the restaurant question. Um, I assume that there was some thinking that this would be a good spot for a restaurant and you guys all seem really smart, but you can look up and down the drive and I cannot think of a restaurant, I don't know, from North Avenue all the way up to Wilson, Lawrence, whatever, where a restaurant exists on the inner drive that's been successful. There have been some attempts for instance, at 4250 Marine Drive, in my recollection, two or three times that they've lasted no more than a year, due in part to crappy food, but low, low attendance. So is there a concern or has there been research that this will actually work? So, you know, I think- I think maybe uh, being I just want to add on is, is there, are you guys planning on subsidizing this restaurant? Because that's important. Sure. I mean, Mark, you know, to your question, I think uh, we'd probably take the contrarian view is that there isn't a restaurant on Lakeshore Drive, so we'll be the only one and then plan for it to be great with great food. Uh, you know, Luke, I think we view the restaurant as, as an amenity to the building in the neighborhood. Um, you know, we're not looking to just get the most rent and get the, the, you know, the best business deal for that restaurant. We're really looking for who is the right restaurant group, what is the right the right style to be an amenity of the neighborhood and a business that will work. Um, 
you know, we, we add restaurants and bars into well, really restaurants into all of our buildings that we develop um, and had success everywhere. You know, I'm here in Cincinnati actually for a project we're developing and we put a restaurant on the roof, which in Cincinnati, everyone would have told you were crazy, but we got the right, the right concept with the right business arrangement and it's, it's extremely successful. So we're very confident we'll do a good job and it'll be a, a really great asset for the neighborhood. Don't mistake the fact that I want it to be successful because I live within walking distance of it. It just, as a business owner, it slightly scares me because I look for a pattern. Um, I think the idea is creative and gutsy. Um, uh, I heard you mention a, uh, a comment about not a large bar area. For us neighborhood people, a larger bar area might be nice just for a hangout, whatever. And, you know, of course, the margin is high in booze versus food. So, you know, I hope it works. Thank you. Appreciate it. And another reason for the question was, and, you know, I, I hope there, there's a good equitable uh, relationship with the developer and the operator because, you know, five to 6,000 square feet is, it's a lot of restaurant for this location. And, you know, this is like a two to 3,000 square foot space potentially. So if you are doing that, you know, we would have just asked that you really do it well because, you know, we'd hate to see in two to three years, you guys just split the split, split it up in half and then throw, you know, two tenants in there that are not super beneficial for the neighborhood. Understood, and we're, we're in complete alignment with that. Uh, it's critical for it to be successful and, and a great concept as it'll make our, our residents happy. So but thank you for the comments. John McCarthy. Yeah, um, I wanna say that the, uh, we're at 3750, we're just a block north of the development. And we too have been involved in the, uh, in the discussions over the last two years. Um, there's been a lot of cooperation here in, uh, from my perspective, uh, for the whole, you know, the, the neighborhood, the block that we're, we're involved in. Um, my question has to do, I've got two actually. One is with the restaurant, will the restaurant have a balcony and will it have an outside balcony? And also uh, what is the signage gonna look like? And is this gonna be a local, a local restaurant tour or will it be some kind of chain uh, restaurant on the second that that's my first question the second one is regarding the um the several spaces on the on the south side of waveland that will be that are set aside from eight o'clock in the morning to nine in the uh in the evening if there is a if there is a delivery for some someone at 3700 across the street would those spaces be available for uh for that delivery Sure, I can, I can answer. So let's start with the loading question. The, the quick answer is yes. Um, you know, in those spaces where something that our, our neighbors to the West New York, New York private residences um, were really interested in as, as well. So that kind of was part of our, our collaboration with them. But yes, those are tr true loading spaces on the street that can be used by anyone. Um, so I think that answers that question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, local versus chain. Uh, we have no intent to do a chain. It's going to be a local local restaurateur um, from a successful established group. And then the third one was related to outdoor space for the restaurant. Yeah. Uh, we're hoping to have some patio seating right out front of the entrance, imagining that for coffee and newspaper in the morning. And then we'll have some seating in our kind of private courtyard area. So nothing on the rooftop, but within our, our courtyard area, there'd be a little bit of indoor outdoor seating. Okay, what about the signage? Signage, um, good question. I, you know, I think we have Chris Sash. Maybe you can respond to what we've already kind of gotten. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's pretty there's pretty strict um, ordinance requirements for signage in the city of Chicago. So um, that would be the the um, the job of the the, the restaurant um, owner to to go through that process and get that approved. Um, but as I said, they, they would need to comply with um, the, the Chicago ordinances on that. The, the, uh, the, under a plan development, all signage has to be approved by the zoning administrator. So whatever signage we're gonna have here, we have to submit to the zoning administrator 
and also we will be submitting it to the Alderman too for his review. Okay. Kurt Banky. Hello. Yes. Um, I have a few questions based on some of the things that have been said. One, the restaurant. Well, this to me, I live, I'm looking at the site right now out of my living room window and I'm at 555 Cornelia and we're, I feel like I live in a restaurant desert. So if there's something there that's good, it will, it would be awesome. There's maybe three restaurants in this neighborhood. People might think there's a lot more, but there's three, two of them aren't great. Um, so I, I welcome it. Um, I was wondering the driveway Currently, you come off from Lakeshore Drive and, and you have access to the turnaround. Is that when you go down the ramp on the south side of the site, you go down the ramp and then back up again? Is that meant for on-site circulation to get you to the front door of the New York? Or do you, are you going to have to be going down Pine Grove and coming up Waveland always to enter the building? So the, the, the intent of that drive was both for, for our building and also for New York. So that they can have access from their garage, both to Waveland, to and from Waveland, and to and from Lakeshore. Uh, okay. so, so keeping that sort of same circulation strategy in place, that was the okay. Intent. And my final question is, this is really sort of the first time I'm seeing this building. I know immediate neighbors have seen it, but like I said, I'm going to, I'm going to look at the entire thing right out my living room window. I think the presentation was extremely light on what the building looks like. I would like to see renderings of Waveland. I'd like to see what the building looks like from the corner and not part way down the block. Um, what is that courtyard? What is um, the impact on the immediate neighbors and the four story looks like condominium buildings across the street on Waveland? I don't know what the base of the tower looks like. I don't know what the drop off or where the entry door of the tower is. You did a great job, which a lot of presentations haven't, in showing the building in its greater context, but the building specifically itself, um, I, I didn't get any sense of what that is today. Chris, can you respond to that? Chris, are you, have you muted Chris, Chris Sash? Yeah, sorry. Um, I'm here. Um, I mean, there's at, at the moment, obviously, uh, we, we have those views. Um, I, I, I'm assuming that we can we can share uh, other views. Um, it's it's essentially going to be, you know, you wouldn't be seeing anything different. You would just be seeing it from a different angle. Yes. Well, another angle would tell us what it is. Chris, are, there, are, there not, are there not renderings at the base of the building and, and what it's doing as a pedestrian or the immediate impact to the neighborhood at its adjacent levels? Or if I'm walking down Waveland or walking down Lakeshore Drive, what I see, I think there was one image shown um, of looking up where, you know, the buildings are on a plinth and there's a lot of landscape. So you're walking next to planters, not residents. I know there's precedent for that on the north side of, of Waveland. But I still have no idea of what this building looked like on Waveland when it comes to the ground and what is on the ground and where the entrance is, et cetera. Chris, would you be able to zoom in on the elevation? Not to put you on the spot there, but is that something you could pull up? Because I think that that Waveland elevation was zoomed out, but zoomed in, I think there is some detail that, that occurred. It may not completely answer your question, but I think it would help quite a bit with the context. Did you guys have more renderings that you did for the city? No, these are these are the renderings that we've been sharing. This is all and, done. Um, you know, in terms of the number of meetings, too, we, we did have a few uh, community meetings, and the alderman can speak to that, um, that were open to the community as well uh, over the last few years. Chris, can you zoom in on those on that, uh, on that lower level on the uh, Waveland property? Yeah, I'm just trying to navigate that at the moment. This might even help people understand. See, I had no idea. So you basically have the townhomes on this side as well, and that's how you're addressing the buildings to the north side of Waveland then. Okay. Yes. And, and Where? The, um, the, the precedent for this that we look a lot at is in Vancouver. This sort of strategy is done quite successfully. 
It's actually uh -huh. part of the DPD's um, sort of design strategies as well, uh, okay. where you get this really great kind of cozier pedestrian experience. And then the yeah. top step back quite a bit. So when you're walking down the street, you're really feeling, you know, brick and stone and, yeah. and, and greenery um, in that environment. Sure. So then the tower is set back how far from these facades? Uh, it is set back. I will, uh, let me look that information up. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn on that, but um, I will, when I stop sharing my screen here, I'll, I'll get that information for you. So the tower lobby is shared with the New York lobby on that turnaround? No, it's it's no. a separate separate entrance for each building. Right? Well, I understand that, but the, I'm talking about on the turnaround. So clearly, you're not going to go into the New York to go into this building, but that's the same drop-off circulation point. So the entry of the tower is to the west. This is the entry to the. Let me zoom out a little. Sorry, I'm zooming too much. So we have the the New York private residences yeah. at the west there, and then. Our building to the east so the right so the I mean, entry to the new building is on the west side of that building on the same drop off yes it is yeah. thank you Tressa. okay and then the restaurant is on the ground level at right at the corner that everybody's been talking about this is the restaurant okay yes. okay what does the east side of that facade look like at grade. I don't know if everybody's seen these. I've not seen any of this to this level of detail. So I don't want to be taking up a bunch of time, but I'm seeing this for the first time. Chris, can you bring us around to the front of the building on Lakeshore Drive, on Inner Lakeshore Drive, and show it? You had a slide before. We have a slide in the presentation that shows that. We do. I'm Under as well, Chris. Yeah. I apologize, this is not being cooperative. <laughs> it's never cooperative when you need it to be cooperative. <laughs> I'll just move the slide. <laughs> but, yeah. There we go. Okay. So all of that ground level is restaurant? This, this area right here, restaurant. Okay. All right. The idea there, Kurt, it's uh, sort of a darker brick with some wood detailing on what would be garage doors to give an indoor-outdoor sort of right. situation um, mm -hmm. with, with pretty intense landscaping um, kind of along the front of the restaurant. So really giving kind of a lively... Mm -hmm. uh, open and, and sort of green feeling. Okay, that'd be actually a great place for let us entertain you. One of the things, you know, that intersection, you guys, no one mentioned, but it's the point where you go down and under Lakeshore Drive. So everyone playing tennis, everyone golfing, this would be a great alternative as a place to come to, to grab people who aren't in the neighborhood to even sure. use at least during spring, summer, fall, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, okay. All right, well, this was really helpful. Thank you for doing this. Of course, thank you. Dan Mercurio? Hey, hey, Kurt, actually, I wanna second what you just said about lettuce. I think for a restaurant to do well in that neighborhood, you need to have someone that is Chicago-driven, who is not just a mom and pop, who is a, a local quote-unquote chain, because they're the only ones that are gonna survive that, because you wanna cater to that want to be a Lincoln Park person that's living in Lakeview. But second, my question is, what are the price points of these, of these rentals slash condos? Because are they going to match what's in the neighborhood? 
I mean, right now we're looking at most condos that are on market in that, I mean, two to three bedrooms pending are, you know, 800 or so. I mean, what are, what are we looking at for price points on these guys? And are, is the restaurant going to cater to that market? Right. So these are apartments, so not condos, just as kind of to clarify that piece. And uh, the least expensive um, apartments will be about 1400 a month, up to the most expensive being about $3,900 a month. And there'll be a, a large mix and range in, in between. I just, say, just out of curiosity, with as with the market as what it is right now, why are we doing all, all rentals versus a condo rental mix with two, two different buildings? Sure. I, you know, that's, we're an apartment, mixed use apartment developer. Um, that, that's all we do. That's what we know. Uh, so we're very confident in that strategy and, and, um, and really that we're sticking to, to kind of our, our business plan relating to that, but appreciate the, the comment though. Michael Zink. Hi, I just to raise um, just a few points that maybe you can explain. It's probably going to come up later uh, among the neighborhood, but just figure we should talk about it now. Uh, first was, uh, and I've heard some comments in the last week or so, especially from the neighbors uh, across the street. I think somebody made reference to it earlier, the 3700 building. Um, so first, if you could talk about uh, parking in the area, both before and before, during and after the project. And then secondly, um, another point, which I just saw somebody raise in the Q&A, overall congestion about that, again, during and after, especially with emergency vehicles. Paul, Paul Bear, can you speak to the parking? Paul, do you want to answer that question? So I think if, if KLOA is still on, uh, the traffic. Javier, are you on? Yes, I am on. Uh, okay. Good evening. My name is Javier Milan. Uh, I'm a principal of KLOA. And if you don't mind, I'm going to keep the video off because sometimes my bandwidth acts up on me. So I'm trying to make sure that uh, I can talk about this. Uh, with regards to parking, uh, as it was mentioned, you know they are they are going to be providing their own uh, parking spaces for the apartment. Uh, it is anticipated that the, the parking for the for the restaurant could be accommodated by the adjacent parking uh, public parking spaces. In this case, you have the New York. There's a public parking. There's also a, a smaller public parking lot, and I forgot the address, but it is uh, very close. Uh, the 3700 uh, building. You know, I actually parked there a few times when I went to the meetings. Uh, uh, also, uh, we looked when when we looked at the parking, we looked at the uh, the census data and uh, and uh, and data from from the uh, from the city of Chicago, and. In the area, about 60% of, of the trips made to, to restaurants are done via walking or transit. Uh, the, the, the remaining trips, you know, 20% are just rate, ride shirt trips, whether it's, you know, taxi, Lyft, Uber, and, and then the rest is personal automobile. So, so that, that minor uh, percentage, you know, we're talking about 20% of personal automobiles, you know, we believe that that, you know, can easily be accommodated by the parking available in the in the New York as well as other uh, other areas, with regards to congestion, you know, we actually conducted a traffic study that was reviewed and approved by the city of Chicago. Typical of any traffic study, you you tend to get a sample of a, of a day, you know, a typical on, on a weekday, uh, whether it's Tuesday, Wednesday, or, or Thursday. But in this case, we actually did two days. One day was what I call the normal day no no games for the Cubs. The other day that we counted, it was a double header because everybody knows that conditions do change when there's a, a game with the Cubs. So, so we analyzed that, we presented the, the, the analysis to the, to the city, they reviewed it, they approved it. Uh, with regards to the emergency vehicles, you know, that is something that is paramount, it's very important. Uh, we do not believe that, that this will um, affect that because of the proposed uh, drop of area or, or the proposed uh, valet uh, during construction, uh, that management of traffic will have to be reviewed by the city of Chicago to make sure that it doesn't affect 
emergency vehicles. Uh, I hope I answered your questions. And, and the site itself has been reviewed by the fire department and they have uh, stamped approved their plan uh, for this development as well. And it should be pointed out too that uh, when we do our traffic study as was done by KLOA and we submit that to the city, the city does their own uh, traffic analysis uh, independent of ours. And so it was, they looked at ours, but they did their own. And after they did their own, that's when they gave approval to our traffic study, to our traffic plan, because it was approved then by the Chicago Department of Transportation. That's correct. And, and just one other thing to add, you know, Michael, and I, hopefully that your question was answered, but just, you know, our experience and, and many other buildings we own is each year there's less and less demand for parking um, in all of our apartment buildings across the Midwest. And, and then that's not city dependent. Um, and, and we really do believe that that's where the future is. It's, it's not in parking, uh, it's in walkable pedestrian friendly neighborhoods with, with great retail and amenities in the neighborhood. Um, so, you know, that we, we believe very strongly in, in we have the right number of spaces that our building will need. Uh, Adams. Hi, um, I'm just curious to what is planned for the rooftop of the tall building? Uh, I know some of it's mechanical, but it looks like there's two stories of windows and uh, what's gonna, what's gonna go up there? Chris, can you answer that question or, or Paul, either one? Sure, the, the, the top two floors um, are essentially penthouses um, and the, the, the main roof, it might be easier if I just share the roof plan here. One second, I'll get back to here. Everything is zoomed in now. Okay. So here's the mechanical area up here. The rest of this area is uh, green roof. Um, and then there are some uh, terrace areas uh, for the uh, penthouses on those upper floors. Chris, uh I, I don't know if that was the answer to the question. Could you have the slide that shows the rendering, the top of the 19 story building? Do you have that slide that you can pull up? Sure. Right up there, those, that top of the building with all those windows, what's behind those windows? Uh, that, is, there are penthouses up there. That, does that answer your question? Yes. Thank you. The last question is from Susie Hunter. Right. Thank you. Um, I have a question in regards to the traffic study that was done a couple of years ago. And, you know, analysis are great and it tries to grab a snapshot and determine sort of best case scenario, but an analysis is not reality. And for everybody who lives in our area, and if you drive or if you don't, we know traffic can be a nightmare and you're limited to getting to this building from either Belmont off of Lakeshore or Irving Park off of Lakeshore. And then you have to come in from the other areas of the neighborhood because of the one-way streets. You know, how are you going to address, I think it's great having a restaurant in the area because like someone had said, there aren't anything here. And I know a lot of people walk in the area, and, but coming in with valet and cars, you know, we have 700 and some parking spots in our building at Irving and Lakeshore, plus 3950 has a ton, um, adding more rentals here. That's a lot of traffic. I drive it every day. I sit in traffic all the time. You can't get through those lights sometimes. And I know the city has done their job and the analysis, but how do you address this? Because it is a nightmare and it's reality. It's not practicality, it's reality. And your analysis doesn't always help. And it's, you know, I think there's a lot of concerns about some traffic in the area. Yeah, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, can everybody hear me? 
Yes. Uh, yes, I, I certainly understand the question. Like it was mentioned, you know, we, we conducted counts on two separate days, you know, because again, one count didn't have the cops and the other count did. I mean, we need to see that. Uh, besides an analysis, I just wanted to, to let you know, and, and, and the city is actually very, a very strong advocate of this, we conduct simulations. And you might say, well, what does that mean? And why simulations? And it's exactly because of what you said. An analysis can give you an idea up to a point. A simulation will give you a better view because traffic changes constantly. You might have a, a search, you might not have it. So it will show you some instances in which, like you said, you're gonna have a situation in which the vehicle couldn't go through through the signal. It, it happens, you know, I mean, as much as you want to uh, uh, organize, you know, uh, as much as you want to uh, coordinate the, the signals, sometimes things like that happen and you're absolutely correct. For that reason, we run numerous simulations because traffic will always change, you know, and it does indicate certain, certain instances as it is under existing conditions, some traffic has to wait for a second cycle length or a third one. It does happen, you know, but overall, uh, the intersections, you know, and, and the city, like Jack mentioned, you know, uh, conducted, I mean, review our study and conducted their own study, uh, will be able to accommodate this. The reason behind, like I mentioned, is restaurants in this area tend to uh, generate a lot of their uh, business or slash traffic pedestrian and transit, you do have people that will drive their vehicles. Absolutely. I mean, it will, it will happen, but it's not the majority. For example, a restaurant that the majority of the traffic would be generated by, by vehicles would be somewhere in the suburbs. You don't have that density that you have in here. You don't have the public transportation either. So for those reasons, yes, I mean, this will work and the city actually reviewed it and conducted their own analysis and simulation and, and agree with the findings. Thank you. Is that the last uh, question from the committee members? Yes. All right. We will now take questions from our attendees. A reminder to please click the raise your hand button if you have a question. Uh, Maggie will then call on you when it's your turn to speak. Uh, when you are called on, you will be able to click unmute on your screen. If you have any technology questions, you can write them in the Q&A box. And out of respect for everyone's time, and to ensure that we get to as many questions as possible, please make sure that you stick to short and direct questions. Uh, Maggie will mute each speaker after their question in order to keep the meeting moving and to unmute the next speaker. Hi, everyone. We're going to get started. Fiona M., you should be allowed to unmute at this time. Thank you so much. Can, can everybody hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, I don't think you can see me, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. Um, so thank you, Alderman and, and committee members. Um, I live in the 3700 building, and I know that there's no one from our building has, has, had, has been on the committee, and I'm not sure how that happened or what the structure of the committee is. But I do think, given that how much we're going to be impacted by this building, I would really urge the committee to take the opportunity to hear from the neighbours um, in our building. It's been there since 1980 and it has such charm and character. My two questions are, when you're choosing to put one building that's you know much higher than the other, why would you put that really high one right next to our building and completely overshadow our building as opposed to the opposite way around? And then my second question is with regard to that's a very strong wind there. We lost our whole roof of our building last year at the end of the summer, as people will probably remember. And so we have some strong concerns about how the construction of this huge um, you know, building right next to us will create a further wind tunnel and wondering what kind of studies have been done on the safety of that. Thank you. All right. In, in terms of the, the position of, of the building, um, the taller building being right at the corner there, um, this was something that obviously uh, impacts a, a lot of people. And we, we looked at this, uh, I took a lot of time studying this. Um, obviously, uh, one of the, the biggest concerns was interrupting views of the lake. Um, 
and we did work with uh, 3660 uh, it, because essentially this building is right in front of theirs to, to look at uh, view angles and studies, make sure that um, we weren't uh, well, we're having the, the, the least effect on, on views from their, their point of view. In terms of the, the general city fabric as well, I mean, uh, it, generally when you when you address a corner, it's 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 good to have a, a statement on the corner to, to build the, the city fabric and have an edge. Um, so we're, you know, it's it's again, it's not something that uh, we took lightly. It's it went through a number of studies and iterations. Um, Regarding wind, uh, you know, in in cities, that's that's something that's obviously uh, an issue with uh, wind tunnels just created by uh, buildings and their situation um, and location to each other, proximity to each other. Sorry. Um, it's set back uh, for the the tower is. Uh, and this is kind of addressing an earlier question. The tower is back um, from the, the, the townhome looking um, base by 13 foot 10. So it is set back from the street uh, more than what we could. I mean, we could essentially uh, take it right to the street. So it's pulling it away from the street further and, and creating more separation from um, 3700. So, Chris, if I could just make a couple additional comments there. Um, one thing that's important to note is that the existing approved building was actually significantly taller than what we're proposing on our high rise. So part of our strategy along those lines was actually by, by creating the two building strategy, we we're able to lower the height of that building that that's currently approved to be built there um, in reaction to, you know, really trying to, to help with the height issue. Um, one other comment is regarding the 3700 Lakeshore Drive is that we did do a presentation for specifically for 3700 Lakeshore Drive uh, walkthrough presentation and uh, the alderman was involved in that as well um, and went through questions and answers um, during that meeting. So uh, we, we did do our best to include your building um, in the process. Okay, Lisa G. You should be allowed to unmute at this time. Yep, I'm unmuted. Can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay, so my first question, I actually have five questions slash concerns. So do one or two and then come back to me. Is that how you wanna do it? Yeah, why don't you ask a couple of questions and then and then we can come back to you at the end. Okay, perfect. And let, cause they may get answered, okay. Um, so my question is, um, yes, first I want to thank everybody for being here and representing our community. And thank you, Mr. Kappelman, for um, opening this up to the community. Um, yes, the City Club Apartments did meet at 3700. I lived there um, one time and um, we did get our concerns um, answered somewhat. Um, I, I felt uh, there wasn't enough factual information. Um, and I have some um, emails back and forth from a petition that I um, had drawn up and some answers from uh, Mr. George um, on that. And I, I, I didn't find much factual stuff um, in there, but um, I was hoping that someone could help me um, answer um, why we need more apartments on Lakeshore Drive when actually mostly um, in this neighborhood is condominiums. Um, and there are a lot of open uh, apartments on Halstead. The Halstead Flats has, still has openings. Broadway and Sheridan <coughs> has openings for uh, apartments. Um, this really, this little pocket of Lakeview <laughs> Um, that's part of the 46th Ward is really ownership mainly. Uh, so I, I was wondering why there has to be um, uh, apartments there. That's one of them. Paul, do you want to answer that? 
Um, yeah, you know, I think we sort of answered this a little earlier. I tried to, but maybe I can try again. But, you know, we're apartment developers, one. And, you know, and we do think, again, similar to that, you know, why build a restaurant when there's no restaurant comment? Um, we think this is a great location for apartments in an area that is, is very much weighted towards condominiums. So we think there is a great opportunity um, and demand for, for that. Um, and it is our, our specialty as well. So um, that's sort of the reason for apartments. Um, and you did, you know, your petition, thanks for bringing that up, but yes, we did kind of send answers back to that petition, which I think uh, was started back in 2019. Um, but we did, we did respond to your petition in writing. We can, we can share that again, if it's helpful, or we can. I, I can, I can actually send it to any of the uh, members of this committee also, if they want to see the see it and see what your responses were. It, they actually came from Mr. George. Um, they did, I, I did, I received that. I see, received your questions and we took great time and, and to answer each one of your questions. I know you did, yeah. And I, and I, and I sent that to you and I, I, I didn't have any follow up to that. I, so I, I assumed that I had answered what you wanted, but uh, I took, we took an awful lot of time answering each one of those questions because they were important to you and so they were important to us and so mm -hmm. we did our best and uh, I thought I thought I, thought I guess I was looking for a little more statistics as opposed to fluff so but that's okay that's neither here nor there so my other concern is with the restaurant if there's going to be a patio did you say that you would have to change the zoning to that no if there was Okay, so you can have a patio. Um, okay, all right, because we're right next door, and I was wondering about you know the smell of the food and that kind of thing. And um, you know, one block away is Broadway with a lot of empty uh, restaurants still. Uh, you know, just specifically smell the food. Uh, the all the trash for the restaurant will go straight down into the garage. Um, so, so really that the trash and, and that sort of thing will be out of sight, um, for you. Um, and, you know, we're hopeful that having another 500 people living on this block will really help start to rejuvenate some of the retail around, uh, more people always, always helps the local businesses. So, um, hopefully that'll, will continue to improve. Okay. One more quick question. So you're going to move the bus stop to in front of our building for, the construction. Did you talk to our president regarding um, how that's going to work out with our property and our grass and all that? Because everything's going to get trashed. Lisa, which building are you? Are 30, you in? Thirty-seven hundred. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, happy to have that that conversation, and obviously. You know, don't, wouldn't intend to trash anything, but would would certainly replace. Oh, right. Anything. Well, it wouldn't be you guys. It would just be people waiting for the bus. I mean, if you're going to move a bus stop, do you know what I mean? The the grass is going to get flattened. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Just a whole bunch of excess. You know, people walking and standing and and whatnot. And we don't have cement right mm -hmm. there for a bus stop. We just have grass. So I was wondering what you guys plan on doing to accommodate um yes i mean we're yeah, happy to we'll coordinate that with cdot and happy to coordinate that with you and, and of course you'd replace anything any grass that was damaged when we move it back it would, we'd absolutely be willing to commit to that okay and then susan oh susan f you should be allowed to unmute at this time great thank you so much I want to talk about the egress and ingress. A fire truck is eight feet wide, 35 feet long, an ambulance is eight feet wide. You, the ingress you've got is 22 feet, which makes sense for one vehicle, except you've made it two ways. Fire trucks do not follow very narrow guidelines when they drive. There's over a thousand people in a half a block radius. If somebody was to have uh, a response, an emergency response, especially to the high rises, you're talking about a minimum of two um, 
fire trucks with ladders, not including all the other emergency vehicles too. And frankly, I think your egress ingress does not work. I think it's totally unsafe. Also at the curve is where you have vehicles coming up from the underground, which creates even a bigger problem. And so with that, please don't tell me about a study because I already know the fire department has issues, the building department signs off on things, D CDOT signs off on things, and eventually it goes to Transportation and Ways Committee, which of course you can't find out who's on those committees to talk to. But our situation is unique to just a regular street. We have lots of high rises, very congested. I am begging you aldermen to think this out. The You know what, Susan, I apologize for that. I think you may have gotten unmuted. We're gonna come back to you, Nancy L. I can quickly okay. uh, answer that concern because it's been raised a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, um, the fire department has reviewed it and it exceeds the requirements, I think by two feet. I, I understand Susan is very, very concerned about that, but the fire department is, uh, is not in an agreement with her assessment. Okay. Nancy L, you should be able to unmute at this time. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm not Nancy. Uh, I'm using my wife's computer. Uh, it, it's hard for me to visualize feet versus stories. Uh, at what point does the top of the mechanicals of the tall building hit the uh, hit New York private residence floors? Let me share the that elevation so you can. Well, you, you know. Oh, are you able to unmute? Yeah. Well, well, what does that, uh, the 228.4 feet, what mm -hmm. does that represent as far as height against the uh, New York private residents? Uh, so I haven't counted the stories here, but this is to scale. So you can see um, the New York private resident here and the number of stories I, um, I haven't counted, sorry. I thought there was uh, information done at the very beginning that discussed how many floors it went up uh, compared to the, the uh, private residences. For the new building, proposed building, it's not 19 floors plus the mechanical. Yes. It, it does not relate to the New York private residence. In because the, the, the floors might not be you know, 10 right. feet per, per floor, or 11 feet per, per floor. Correct. Correct. Uh, in terms of where this aligns with the number, you're, you're asking what, at what point is this 228 foot four relative to the number of stories in the yes. New York residences? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I have not counted that, but this, this is an accurate drawing here. So um, we can, <laughs> Take a look at that. <laughs> it appears to be about the 21st floor. The, the only thing is the New York private, private residences is 460 feet tall, and ours is, for example, half of that, 228. So it'd be halfway down from the top of the build of the New York private residences is where our building would be. There you go. That's an easy way to look at it. It's, it's approximately 20. There's 47 floors based on the, the party room at the top. So we're looking at 23 and a half floors. Does that sound right? Approximately, approximately, they said. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Vicki M., you should be able to unmute at this time.
Hello? Hello. Oh, we can hear you. Great. Great. Is there something you'd like to ask me? You had your hand raised. I'm Vicki you... Mogul. I'm the president of NYPR Condo Board. Okay, Vicki, did you have a question that you would like to pose to the development team or our office? Regarding... I'm sorry, I don't know which question you're asking. So, wait, uh, Vicki, this is Tressa. Um, your hand yeah. was raised in the Zoom, and so she called on you. Oh, I don't know how. Although, I would like to point out that I don't believe that the building shown in the rendering that represents ours is really to scale. So I think that's a question that you all need to answer later on. I do think the height comparison is a good way to think of it. Does that make sense to people? I think so. So, thank you. If, if we're far away and they're 228.4, you, you can look at it that way. Thank you, Vicki. Okay. Jonathan K., you should be able to unmute it this time. Uh, yes, hopefully I did. And uh, uh, hello, everybody. So my concern is, is going to the restaurant. And I think I'm going to be somewhat of a contrarian of the people here tonight because uh, I'm not thrilled with the idea of, uh, of a restaurant um, appearing. As someone has mentioned, there, ha there aren't any up or down Lake Shore Drive. My big concern is with nuisance. I came from, uh, before I moved here, Here I came from an apartment that was a um, block away from a general restaurant. And this for us meant smelling bacon in the morning in our apartments, uh, smelling garlic uh, whenever they did the pre-cooking. And then again, in the evening, there wasn't a fixed schedule to it. There was an approximate schedule. But um, whatever the regular city ordinances were, weren't sufficient to avoid that nuisance. And this is a similarly, there's a lot of people living very close to this. So I'm wondering, is it even possible to have commitments on controlling nuisances? Uh, I heard about the trash and the garbage. That's a good thing. But in terms of, you know, again, how far away uh, would you expect uh or the radius you would expect people are going to smell the, the breakfast cooking and then later uh, uh, some of the more spice dishes. Um, and if there's some commitments that could be made for controlling that, uh, you know, again, beyond just the regular city ordinances. That's a, a good question. I'm not a, uh, a kitchen equipment expert, but I, I do know from familiarity with some of our other developments that uh, the, the type of exhaust equipment you put in can help quite a bit with smell if you put the right the right things in and uh, you know obviously we will have our residents living the closest to the restaurant so you know it, it, we're mutually aligned to want to keep that um, in a way that's not disruptive okay Irene H and I apologize if I mispronounced your name you should be able to unmute at this time Hi, it's Irini. Um, so I live on 3660 and I, was, uh, I, I have a hard time believing that we don't know what story this, those penthouses are going to end at and that this is to scale. I believe that that was one of our concerns as a building as to how tall the building is going to be and what is it equivalent to what floor on 3660. So I just, I just think I, we did not get a clear answer on that. We did uh, do uh, view studies for your building and we did it at, I believe it, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Chris, but I think we did it at four different levels, uh, at four different areas, uh, levels of your building. Uh, I think the question in this case was where does the top of the building land on what story of your building? And, we, and unfortunately, I don't, we didn't have an exact uh, match or an exact level of where our building ends up against your, your story. Obviously the floors are different heights and so they don't match up 19th story to the 19th story. 
or to the top of mechanicals. But in my own counting, when we were had that, that up, it was around the 22nd floor approximately. Um, also, you can look at it from the way that uh, your building, the height of your building and the height of our building. I hope that answers the question as best we can. Stephen M, you should be able to unmute at this time. Thank you, Maggie. Uh, my name is Stephen Mayer. I live at 3730 North Lakeshore Drive. Um, I am on the board of our condominium association, but to be clear, I'm here representing myself as an individual tonight. I've, and like uh, one of the previous speakers from 3730, I can say with some certainty that our building or our building board or our building uh, management company, we're never consulted, um, we're never included in this committee, for example. Um, I've heard a lot of talk tonight about a traffic study being done. I even saw a, a shadow study that was done for different times of the year. But one thing I really haven't seen is a study of the effect, the impact of these buildings on views, uh, views of the lake, views of the park, views from our building as far south as Navy Pier. I know that uh, for a lot of, it's hard for me to believe that uh, the residents that are directly closest to this development, those at the New York and those at 3600, who are going to have their views blocked at least up to the 19th or 20th or 23rd floor, as we've been discussing, that they don't find issue with, um, with this interruption or destruction of their views. I believe even from our apartment building, our views are going to be blocked by this new development. And uh, I haven't heard any talk of a view study. I know there was no view study done in our building. And I do think that this new building is going to have a very serious and deleterious effect on views. The views that really are add a lot to the value of our apartments or our condominiums uh, to our investments here. So I just want to say that it's not really a question. If you have done some view studies, I'd like to hear more about them. But I think that's a really important aspect of this development that has not been sufficiently addressed. Thank you. Well, with respect to the 3700 building, there obviously this building wouldn't have any um, effect on the views of the, what your views of the lake would be since they're going to be to the south of you. Looking south, obviously, you're going to see the 19 story building. Uh, if you were on an end unit, I'm not really sure that sounds a year worth as opposed to being on Waveland. I believe when we did our presentation to your building, we were looking at your south facing building and there was four or five units that had windows facing our building. Everybody else had windows facing either north or south. I mean, not either east or west, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, and then with respect to the views um, for the New York uh, apartment building or New York residences rather, I'm sorry. That building was in fact designed to have a building built right in front of it. If you look at the building from the other angle, the, the windows out of the New York uh, private residences, their windows face out at an angle uh, so they can see the lake as opposed to looking straight out of their building. So that building was in fact, when it was first designed or planned, this whole area was planned for, I believe it was at least two, if not three buildings. And that building was uh, designed the way that it was with those diagonal uh, facing windows so a building could be built right in front of it to have the least effect on its views. And the view study that we did do for, we did a view study for the 3660 building. We also did a view study for the 3600 building, a little bit uh, less uh, of a view study for that building.
Thank you. And then just a reminder to everyone, we are going to be cutting off public comment and questions at nine so that the committee can deliberate and take it to a vote. Um, I'm gonna go with Betsy B. You're able to unmute at this time. Hi, this is Mark. I'm using uh, Betsy's computer. This question pretty much goes out to Paul. Um, this question was already addressed in light. As far as the restaurant goes, how is kitchen exhaust going to be vented and where so that it is not smelled on Waveland or Lakeshore Drive? So, you know, we don't, we don't have the engineered drawings yet for that, but it will be vented through the roof of the kitchen with scrubbers um, for, for the exhaust and smell. But on top of the kitchen is the rest of our building, so it will be vented most likely all the way to the roof, which will be much higher than the lower buildings, I would assume. Is that correct, Chris, or, or is, that, is that wrong? The restaurant building, Chris, is, is, is not underneath the tower. It's set up oh, from the tower. I apologize. I thought it was. OK. And then also misspoke before. I apologize not to vote, just to deliberate if anyone was freaking out. Um, Samuel W., you should be able to leave at this time. Hi. Um, I don't have a question. I just have a comment. Um, I'm a renter in the area. And I would really love this development to go through. Um, you know, I saw a few derisive comments in the question and answer about renters, about we don't care about the neighborhood around here. I really do care. I would love to see more opportunities to rent in the neighborhood. And I would be really disappointed if this development didn't go forward. So I hope you take that into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Michael M., you should be able to unmute at this time. Hi, yes, thank you. Um, I have a question about the restaurant. In the event of an unforeseen economic circumstance, should the developer wish to turn the restaurant space back to townhouses or other similar residential units, does the developer have to go through a whole nother permitting process? And I guess as a follow-up, um, well, it is, I understand your intent to put in a, uh, what we would call a nice restaurant. Um, if economic terms came out differently, would you, could you put in a Chipotle? So there were two questions. Thank you. Thank you all. With respect to the first question, uh, if we are going to change or the number of units that are permitted under the plan development. Every plan development has what we call a bulk table. And the bulk table has in it all of the things that we're discussing tonight with respect to the number of units, the number of parking spaces, et cetera. If we go to, if we want to add and increase the number of dwelling units, we would require a number of residential units, we would have to go back and get permission from the city of Chicago to do that. With respect to the Chipotle cakes, that, Paul, that's or, or that's your answer on something like that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we really truly don't want a Chipotle. We don't want a fast food chain. It, it, it's not it's not the plan, and it it, it won't happen. Um, we are fully motivated to have the restaurant as we described, um, a local nicer restaurant that's for the neighborhood. I mean, that's critical part of our business plan that we need that to happen. So um, fully motivated to make that work. Sarah L, you should be able to unmute at this time. Hi, thank you. Can everyone hear me? We can, yes. Great. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know if the alderman or anyone from the alderman's office has spent time surveying people who congregate in front of the New York building. Um, I think if, if so, because um, it's a really unique and special place and there's constantly, um, as my co-parent said it today, it's a happy place because community is always gathering there. And so 
one of the perks of living in a big city is having green space. And um, even though we are very blessed to have the lakefront across the street, I think we all know that there's just times where it's not feasible to get there. And so um, I feel like we have to balance the needs of the community with development. And with that in mind and with the health of the community is why I'm urging the aldermen to reject the proposal. I have been surveying people just as I've been going over there. I've not heard from one person who wants these buildings. So thank you for your time. Um, I can speak to that, I guess. Um, the This is private property. And um, unfortunately, uh, I mean, it's been great that the community has been able to congregate in this area and that the owners of the property have allowed that over these years. Um, it's, that's been wonderful. Um, but there was kind of always the understanding um, as the years have gone on and, and there were other proposals and there's a current PD there that something would be built there. So um, something, you know, whether it's this project or the project that, you know, happened that they approved before that didn't actually get done, um, you know, there's been a lot of time and effort put into this, particularly for the, for the surrounding residents. Um, and um, so it's really, um, you know, it's hard to tell a private entity that no, you, you can't use your property. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's, that's kind of, you know, where, where we are with that. Okay, and then just to let everyone know, we have a five minute warning for public comment. Um, so we have five minutes left. Ruth C, you should be able to unmute at this time. Hi everyone, can you hear me? We can, yes. Okay, so um, my question is um, twofold. They're really short. The first one is, I know you mentioned the total number of units for both towers and the price points will be between 1400 and 3900 a month. Um, what is the square footage range for those prices? Um, and then what will be the AMI percent for the affordable units? Um, I think developers typically aim for the 60, but um, I wanna challenge you guys to do better than most developers and aim for a lower 40 or 30% of AMI for the affordable units. Um, that's my uh, two short questions. Uh, actually, I can step in. Um, the city's law department and the commissioner for the Department of Housing have uh, told aldermen that they should be following the affordable requirements ordinance rather than making up their own rules. Um, and so I, I'm not an attorney, so and uh, I'm a former social worker. I will be following the advice of our city's law department and keeping it at 60% of the ARO as it is written. Kim O, you should be able to unmute at this time. Hi, since I'm probably the last question, I'll make it quick. Um, I live at 616-618 West Waveland, right across the street from where the development will occur. On the north side of Waveland, there is no alley. And so the traffic, um, we have to double park to unload our cars. We have to deal with the garbage trucks, the Amazon trucks, and all of the other delivery trucks and jockeying all of that. I'm just concerned about the construction and the traffic on Waveland and trying to understand how we will manage through that. Uh, this is Jack George, uh, the attorney. And I just wanted to say with respect to the construction and staging and all of that, I mean, that is something that we will come up with a construction staging plan that we will work out with the aldermen. We'll be, we'll be meeting with the community to get their input so that we cause the least amount of adverse impact to the community while this building is being built. Uh, Alderman Kappelman uh, has asked us and, and we have agreed that we will, during any of the staging work with him, there will be notice given with respect to any closure or, or, or any type of walkways that are gonna be closed or anything like that, because it's our intention to try to, in which we've been doing for the last two and a half years is to work with the community to try to really make this development go up and go up in such a fashion that it causes the least amount of impact 
to any of the people in the neighborhood. So it's our intention to do that. And that's what our commitment is. Thank you. And this is going to be our last question. Kylie M, you should be able to unmute at this time. Hi, yes. Can you guys hear me? We can, yes. Great, thank you. Um, apologies if I missed this. Uh, I know there have been studies in terms of traffic and other things, but I was just curious if there's any information surrounding potential new, uh, noise pollution that the building would add along with the restaurant. Here again, uh, the, the, the noise, there are noise regulations, there are noise ordinances that the city of Chicago has that we're going to be required to comply with and we will, we will comply with, but the city already has those types of ordinances in effect, which, uh, which, are, which developers and contractors and are, are mandated to follow and, and we will be following those regulations. Thank you, and that wraps up our public comment and question section. And now I am going to pass the baton back to Alderman Kappelman. Thank you so much, uh, Maggie. And thank you everyone for asking your questions and providing feedback on this uh, project. So out of respect for everyone's time, we will now move on to uh, committee deliberation. Uh, the committee will determine whether or not they want to vote tonight. Uh, so at this point in time, I ask that uh, the developer and all those connected with the developer, you can uh, please leave and the uh, committee will deliberate. We'll be glad to. And I just, before we do leave, I just wanted to say thanks to you, Alderman, and thanks to the committee and also all the people that uh, came in and tuned in to this uh, virtual presentation. Uh, we appreciate the time. Of, we have spent uh, almost three years on this project and we have gone through a number of renovations and changes. Uh, and uh, we believe that with the consent of the, and support of the neighboring people that we've been able to achieve in this project, we, we think it's a good project and one that'll be fit well into the community. But I, I just wanted to say thanks on behalf of our entire team for giving us the opportunity. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, have the developers all left? Yes, I believe everyone has signed off. Okay. Would anyone from the committee like to start the discussion? Any comments, questions? Douglas, I see you waving your hand, you're unmuted. Yes. Um... As I said earlier, uh, we're satisfied with the agreement that we have with the developer here at 3600 North Lakeshore Drive. I was a little taken aback that uh, one of our neighbors wanted to complain that perhaps we weren't paying attention to the development and uh, the aspects that would have an effect on our building and the board here at 3600 is uh, taken uh, a great deal of interest and spend a lot, a lot of time working with the developer and our attorneys. And uh, we fully support this building, this project. Thank you. Susie, you're unmuted as well. Thanks. I would like to request that we delay the vote for this tonight. I think we get a lot of really good information that comes out of these that we wouldn't have normally had. And I, it's difficult to render a decision for the alderman without really letting some of this information sink in or doing our due diligence on some follow-up questions. So I would respectfully ask if we are able to delay the vote so that we can um, really take in everything that we learned tonight instead of being put the pressure on us to immediately vote um, on whether this should go forward or not. Thank you. Thanks, Susie. Michael I'll second, Sink. Susie. I'm, I'm Michael Sink from uh, East Lake. Your neighbors, uh, our boundaries include this project 
uh, we had, I believe, three, maybe four meetings uh, in which the developer uh, came. Um, and likewise, our wide community included many, many questions over those meetings. Uh, in fact, our board refrained from voting at all on the project until we were satisfied that the most adjacent neighbors at 3600 and 3660 also were in support. Um, and that's my understanding is that both of those condo associations, which if I'm not mistaken, I think include about 1200 condo units um, are in a uh, are in agreement with uh, by their leadership. Uh, we do understand that there's no way you're going to get 100% satisfaction or consensus on any project like this. Um, but those uh, organizations, those uh, condo boards have been uh, in talks for several years uh, on this project. So this has not been something that has been uh, rushed through or otherwise not fully thought out. So East Lakeview Neighbors does support the project as well. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Robert? Michael, how does your cat feel about voting tonight? <laughs> I saw the cat in the background. Uh, yeah, he, listen. he wants attention. <laughs> Bright idea. Hey, we they, these the neighbors have been banding this around for years. They've had a bunch of community meetings. Uh, they've signed off. The immediate neighbors have signed off on it. I'm not going to sit here and try to throw pot shots at the developer and architect. I got my questions answered through uh, some other some other renderings that were shown later. So. I'm in support of voting now. Let's get this done. Let's not delay it. Try to throw arrows at people trying to see what'll stick and, and deflate what is actually is a pretty nice project because it could have been a lot worse. I mean, that they could put up a, a 50, 60 story building, you know, 20, 30 years ago. And it, been, and it could have looked like some about some really nasty Soviet era housing project, like in my neighborhood, a lot of the buildings look like. So I say let's let's just move on, vote for it, yes or no. I you've, second that. You've seen you've seen all the diagrams, you've seen all the schematics, you've had the developer here, you've had the architect, you've had their their traffic guy here. What else is there? So I'm just saying uh, the, the plans have been up on the alderman's site for what months now, weeks. We've had a chance to look at everything. I got my little pot shots in as well. They were answered later on, and I'm in for I'm in favor of voting now. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Patrick Nagel. Sure. And speaking of Soviet style buildings, um, the uh, the first plans for this project, and I'm not joking, uh, predate the fall of the Berlin Wall. So um, I'm dead serious on that. Uh, this has been bandied about now for over 30 years. And I think, you know, I think we've probably reached um, an accord. Like Michael Zink pointed out, I also am on the board at East Lakeview. And we met with uh, developers, and in fact, many of the people who asked questions today asked the very same questions at our meetings uh, several months in a row. And so I feel like we've had a really good opportunity for community feedback, and I think it's time to, uh, to take a vote. Thank you, Patrick. Um, let's see. Mark was up, but I think your hands, oh, there you go, Mark Zipper. Can I make a motion that we vote whether or not to take a vote tonight? Yes, you can. I'd like Second. to make a motion. And who seconded it? Luke Sauer seconds. Thank you. Move to vote on voting. Can I make a comment before the vote, the vote starts? Okay, good morning. Yeah, uh, Chester, go ahead. Yeah, I'm a long retired city traffic engineer who uses the health club in the New York building quite frequently. And I think the city and the development team have done a great job in putting together an operational package. That it's just, it's done very well. I think we should vote now and move, move forward with this project as, as soon as possible. Thank you, Chester. Any other discussion on the I, um, the motion to vote yeah. whether we are going to vote. Yeah, why are we vote? Why are we voting to vote? Why don't we just vote? Let's just get it done. Why? Why prolong this even with another twenty minutes? Okay. I'll make. Mark, I, Mark. I'm uh, Dan. I'm only suggesting that because it was raised by a few people. Yes, I would like to go to a vote 
as well, but a couple members felt concerned about that and I want to hear them. And I think we can do a vote fairly fast. Sorry. Anyone else discussion on the vote to vote? Okay. I just, I just want, let me say something quickly. I just want to say um, that, that as far as the process, as I said earlier, we're, a, we're at 3750, we're a block away. And we knew about this project almost from the beginning. We've been, we've been factored into it. Uh, we've talked to, you know, we've seen these, I've, this is the third time I've seen this presentation. So uh, I, I'm in support of it. I'm supported. And I, I would like to vote now, but uh, I'll certainly vote for voting, uh, whatever we're gonna do now. I, I'm, I wanna go ahead and vote today. Okay, thank you. Anyone else would like to discuss the vote to vote or um, would you like to just vote on whether to vote or just not? Vote. Okay. Oh, Susie, you have your hand up. I just wanna explain that, you know, the reason why I suggest that I've done my due diligence as well. And, and there were some things that were raised tonight. I'm not looking to take pot shots or anything at any of it. It's just, I'm the type of person that I wanna do my due diligence as well after hearing everybody and not be rushed to decision in haste because I need to represent everybody that I represent well and do the right thing as well. So that was the reason for why I was suggesting to delay the vote. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, Mary Ann? I'm having trouble uh, with the contrast between the public comment and the official board positions. Um, I, I think, yeah, my, my request to delay is based on the fact that Lana votes with the nearest neighbors. Um, and uh, it's hard. It's hard for me to tell what's, um, we've gotten a lot of feedback from the area and uh, it's unclear to me. This is something that I know has been in discussion for a long time. I've attended a lot of these meetings at the New York um, and it's still hard for me to discern a consensus. It's different. Everybody's got their own different rules about feedback and board, and a lot of them are not posted online or accessible. So uh, I wouldn't mind tabling it for six weeks. I feel like if we waited for oh. three years, we could do some more, but um, that's why I would like the, the pause to reflect. I don't think we have to make, this committee has, shouldn't have to make any decision in haste. Thank you, Michael Waltz. Yes, I, I agree with Susie. I'm sorry, but this is the first time that the owners um, up here, and this does have an impact at 4,300. Just there's a great concern about the traffic, which I've raised before. Um, and I know that I've had owners on this call tonight. I have had no opportunity to get their feedback from this presentation. So I'm, I'm in favor of um, waiting to, you know, not voting tonight on it until I can get some more feedback. Okay, thank you. Should we go ahead? I don't see anyone else's hands raised. Can we vote on whether to vote or not now? Please, please. Okay, since no more discussion, I'm gonna go through the roll call. Now this is whether or not we should vote tonight. Okay, you should vote tonight, sorry, not me. Um, all right. Douglas Smith, 3,600. Yes, I want to vote tonight so I can vote yes. Thank you. Uh, 3,660, Jim Hennigan. Yes. Uh, 3,750, John McCarthy. Yes, I vote yes. Thank you. Uh, 3,930, George Collar. George, are you on? I can't believe it. George, you're on mute. No. No. Okay. 40, oh, let's see, sorry. Uh, 555 Cornelia, Kurt. Yes. Okay. Uh, 828 Grace, Patrick. Yes. Okay. Beacon Block Club, Stuart. Yes. Okay. Uh, Buena Park Neighbors, Alex. On behalf of the Executive Committee of Buena Park Neighbors, yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Clarendon Park Neighbors, Jackson Morsey. Yes. 
Okay. Let's see. Marty Tangora. I thought I saw Marty back. Yeah, one second. He's on mute. Okay. Yeah, I was trying to unmute and I couldn't do it. Um, uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, Marianne Lalonde, Lakeside Neighbors. Lakeside Area Neighbors, sorry. No. No. Okay. Let's see. Mark Zipper? Yes. All right. Uh, Chester Krapodlowski? Yes. Okay. Patrick Waters, UCC? Yes. Okay. Truman Square Neighbors, Dan? Yes, let's vote. Okay. Friendly Towers, Glenn? Yes. Okay. Um, North Halstead Business Alliance, Mark? Yes. Okay. 4250 Marine, Robert? Yes. Okay. 4300 Michael Waltz? No. No. Okay. Let's see. Um, 655 West Irving Park, Susie? No. Okay. Dover Street Neighbors, Scott Adams. Yes. Okay. Um, East Lakeview Neighbors, Michael Zink. Yes. Okay. Grayson Wilson, Jason DeVore. Yes. Okay. Um, Nuna Maria. No. No. Okay. Um, one North Side, Chris White. <clears throat> Oh, the process issues going back to last week. No. Okay. Luke Sauer. Yes. Okay. Uh, Jackie Lowy, Uptown United. Yes. Uh, 1026 West Montrose, Curtis. Yes. Okay. Um, Jackie Taylor. Yes. Okay, 3950, Anna. Yes. Okay, and Voice of the People, Michael? No, thank you. Okay, so we have, let me count it real quick. I have 24 to seven. 23, 24, yes, that's what I have as well. So the vote passes to vote tonight. All right. I'd like to make a motion. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion that the um, zoning committee approve the city club apartment plan as presented. Okay. Uh, okay, would anyone like to second that motion? I'll second, I'll second it. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, any discussion? I don't see any hands raised. All right, let's move to vote then. Now we are voting on to approve the plan that was presented tonight. So voting yes would be to approve of this plan. <clears throat> All right. Uh, before starting, can we share an opinion? I, that's why I said, is there any discussion? I opened it up. Oh, if you don't mind, I would like to say one thing. Uh, sure, in go general, ahead. In general, uh, uh, folks, I'm with Voice of the People and we're an affordable housing provider. And uh, if we have a bias, it's toward affordable housing. Uh, so. I think in the case of almost all developers, it would be good to have a conversation early on, not on the night of voting, on the issue of affirmative marketing so that uh, people uh, can be included who could rent if they have a rent subsidy. And this is an area of uh, significant discrimination based on source of income, 
And it would be great if zoning changes on approved projects included some assurances that the, the landlord and managers are gonna uh, be able to post openings for apartments uh, uh, to rent subsidy sources and providers, uh, pe you know, people who have a rent subsidy that they can bring to the development, whether it's an ARO unit or a market rate unit, sometimes they can qualify for that too. Uh, but I just want to throw that out there for conversation, for future conversation, maybe with the alderman's office, uh, that we should consider this as a, a possible method to get greater economic diversity within buildings. So, uh, and I plan on abstaining. Okay, thanks. Any other discussion? Okay, I don't see any hands raised. I'm moving on. All right, this is a uh, vote to approve the project. 3,600, Douglas Smith. Yes. Yes. 3,660, Jim Hennigan. Yes. 3,750, John McCarthy. Yes. Uh, 3,930, Pine Grove, George. Yes. Uh, 555, five, five, Cornelia Kurt. Yes. Uh, 828 Grace Patrick. Yes. Beacon Block Club, Stuart. Yes. Buena Park Neighbors, Alex. Yes. Clarendon Park Neighbors, Jackson. Yes. Uh, Marty Tangora. Yeah. Yes. Um, Mary on the Lawn, Lakeside Area Neighbors Association. Abstain. Okay. Uh, Mark Zipper. Yes. Hester. Yes. Thank you. Um, Patrick Waters, UCC. Yes. Okay. Uh, Dan, Truman Square Neighbors. Yes. yes. Okay. Friendly Towers, Glenn. In solidarity with the locals, yes. Thank you. Um, North Halstead Business Alliance, Mark. Yes. yes. Uh, 4250 Marine, Robert. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, 4300 North Marine, Michael. No. No. Okay. Um, six, 655 Irving, West Irving Park, Susie. Susie Hunter? Susie, you're on mute. Sorry, my cat did it. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna abstain. Abstain, okay. All right, let's see. Okay, oh. Ainsley Winmore Black Club. Did I miss Brian Beezer before? Is yes, Brian on? It, it was an it was gonna win, so it was fine. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I would I would have weighed in if it needed to. Uh, yes on the first vote, but yes on the second vote. Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. Um, let's see. Dover Street neighbors, Scott Adams. Yes. Um, East Lakeview neighbors, Michael Zink. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Graceland Wilson, Jason DeVore. Yes. Yes. Okay. Nuna, Maria. Abstain. Okay. Uh, one North Side, Chris White. Uh, due to the 3700 objection, no. Okay. Um, Luke Sauer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Jackie Lowy, Uptown United. Yes. Okay. Um, Ten Twenty Six West Montrose, Curtis. Yes. Thank you. All right, uh, Jackie Taylor. Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Uh, 
3950, Anna. Yes. Yes. Okay. And voice of the people, Michael? I abstain. Okay. Thank you. Alderman, have you counted this already? Yes. 25. I have, I have many, uh, lots of experience doing this in city council. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20. 25, yes. Two, no. Five, abstain. The motion passes. Yeah. That's correct. Yep. That's what I have. All right. That better be a damn good restaurant, by the way. <laughs> it better be. <laughs> Alderman, I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I, I, I will go there. Anyway. Find uh, the first round of drinks. <laughs> I was going to say that, but it's I'm being recorded. Um, so <laughs> thank you all so much for attending our committee meeting and for sharing your questions and feedback. Uh, this is really, really good. So I'm proud of everyone. Uh, we will can share. You speak? Can you speak any more about, uh, I'm, there's some process issues about last. I'd, I'd like to finish this first. We're gonna share the link to view this meeting and any other updates on our website. Um, and as far as questions about the process, I, I welcome your questions. Please send them to um, my, email address, it's in the chat, it's james.kappelman at cityofchicago.org, and I will make sure all your questions are answered. So for that, uh, well, with all that now, uh, thank you all and have a wonderful night. Okay, all right. <laughs>